Hey guys, just letting you know, we charge a standard fee for all the reviews that we do here. This is not meant to be an endorsement, it just helps us to keep the site running. All right, let's jump into it. Hey guys, we're in Fullerton, California, kind of SoCal area. We're looking at an amazing electric bike from Giant. This is the Trance E Plus One Pro full suspension. This thing comes in four different sizes. It's, it's awesome, and this is Mike. He is the current owner, and I guess, how long have you been here of Fullerton Bicycles? So I've been here since uh, March 1st of 2003. I mean, you go way back. So I was like, yes. how long does this store go back? So the store was founded in 1967, and it had a hard opening in 1969. So we just celebrated 50 years of business this March. Rock on, high five for that, buddy. Heck but yeah, 50 brother. years, I mean, there's so much history here, and uh, you, you carry a lot of different giant bikes. Like the last time I covered the bikes, it was at your shop and people Correct. loved it. They were like, wow, look at the, the beautiful design. I giant, mean, giant kills it. They they're do. A, they're a leader in manufacturing and they're a leader in the industry. Tell me a little bit about this because they're one of the leaders for mountain biking specifically, right? Well, correct. So Giant is a global company mm -hmm. and Giant, it, let it be known, Giant manufactures a lot of different bicycles for a lot of major companies. I'm not going to give those companies They are out. a giant company right. after all, yeah. Giant is the world's largest bicycle company of what we call performance bicycles. You know, they make more bicycles performance than anybody in the world. Okay. And I think the number they produce, I might be wrong, like 2,500 bikes a day seven days a week oh my continuously gosh. that's and incredible for other major companies this is one of the top of the line like that's correct for me you know i go into this there's so many details to look at and they've got a really good website but yes. we spent some time with this model that we're looking at right now this is the 2019 again we talked about full suspension we're looking at 150 millimeters of travel up front 140 in the rear really nice suspension so you can see this black anodized coating that gives it reduced stiction it's got a nice look too it blends in beautifully it protects those stanchions we were talking about uh the the suspension design in the rear see how it has these these two pivot points and there's four bars that's like a floating uh floating point is that what they yeah so giant uses the name and i call it it's a world-class proven suspension proprietary design yeah it's called maestro maestro giant created maestro and it launched and i might be a little off on the dates 2004 2005 Giant had NRS, which they used a four-bar Lincoln suspension back in the early day. Then they moved on to this thing called the VT, and then they uh, developed Maestro. Over the years, Maestro has changed, but yet it remains the same. And like you said, Court, we have the two floating rocker arms here that float independently and simultaneously off the shock where the rear end is not attached hmm. to the frame. It's got its own active linkage in the back, a floating rear end or a floating pivot or however you want to describe it, different terminology. So it's designed to have like kind of a vertical travel versus Correct. a rainbow? Correct, so the, essentially the way the travel pattern works on any giant maestro bike is the suspension comes up and it starts to ramp and curves and ramps hard at the top. Oh. So it's enabled to give you efficient pedaling, small bump compliance, yeah. and also uh, anti-squat and it doesn't, the suspension is fully active in braking mode, Yes. which is awesome. So when you're descending that bumpy trail, the suspension is still active. Does that yes, make sense? Yes, it does. And squat, I've heard, can you, can you explain what that's, what that means here? If you're descending a trail and the trail's got what we call braking bumps into the turn and you lock the brake up, a lot of bikes would stink bug where the suspension would actually unengage where Giant stays active through the bumps. Yes, so you yes. still have suspension while you're braking, which gives you essentially more control as a mountain biker. Thank you for terrain. explaining that. Yeah, I mean, control is a big deal. We were spending a lot of time gathering specs on this, and I was just looking at how we do have clearance here. See, when we turn all the way, we're not getting any contact. I've seen other bikes where, you know, they'll have rubber bumpers or things like that because the frame design just maybe wasn't as exact as this. So we were wondering about how are we gonna fit the battery on top of the tube. By integrating it here in the down tube, not only does it look beautiful, but positions weight low and centered on the frame. It does have a two point point um, unlock system. In fact, I think we, we have the, the keys in here. If I turn this, like go ahead and, and move, put your hand down here, Mike. Yep. So check this out. We unlock it and it just, it just pops out a little ways and then you have to press that silver button to take it the rest of the way. That's awesome because you don't want to drop the battery if you're unlocking it. And one thing I've noticed about, um, you know, again, there's this transition from external to internal. Sometimes there's been like rattle and stuff, but you were telling me there's an adjustment in there. You can actually tighten it. So correct. So essentially on the battery, what Giant's done is they've engineered, there's a little, uh, a latch inside there. I won't be able to see it, but there's two set screws and those set screws, once the battery's in, we at, at the shop here, will get that tight. So that way eliminates 
any type of rattle, any type of noise, yeah. and prevent the bike from having any malfunction while on the trail. That's important. It is. So to give you some feedback, uh, this is a 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour, roughly 500 watt hour battery pack, lithium ion, high capacity cells from, from high quality companies. That's, you know, again, we are dealing with Giant, Correct. and Yamaha is who they partnered with for the drive system down there. So we'll get into the motor in a second. 9.2 pounds on the battery pack itself, 54.6 pounds on the bike, as you see it here for the medium size right. frame, only 6.6 .6 pounds for that motor. So it's actually 13% smaller volume yes. than some of the older Yamaha motors. Right. It's got more pawls, so there's these little ridges inside that they catch quicker. And then there's also four latches instead of just two. So when you're pedaling, if, if you're pedaling really hard, you're not gonna have any slippage. Correct. Slippage, you know, that's inside the motor down here. Right. But look at this chain ring as well. This has narrow wide tooth pattern, which yes. it's, it, you know, that's great because it fits perfectly into the chain. We even have that, I think down here um, on that, that that's little- That's the SRAM Eagle. Th yeah, uh, down on the SRAM Run Eagle by. on the sprocket there. So, I mean, this is awesome. Look at this, this is 12 sprockets in the rear, 11 to 50 tooth. So that's the Eagle. It's like super big spread. Then you don't need multiple chain rings. We're just gonna keep it lighter. And then only one shifting mechanism. This also has the roller clutch. So you can tip it forward and press that button there. And that will be for changing a flat tire or? There we go, you almost got it. Gotta push it far. Thank you, yeah. So that's <laughs> designed to help the rider on the trail take the back tire off in a flat. This is a design that has been patented by SRAM and it's on all of their uh, Eagle components, GX, SX, XO1, and XO. This is fantastic. So like you're saying, there's a, it's gonna help you do trail maintenance along with the quick release, which we have on the front and the rear. This bike has through axles, front and rear, so 12 millimeter in the front, 15 millimeter. Oh, yeah, sorry, 12 millimeter in the rear, 15 millimeter up front, boost hub spacing, that's 110 up front, 148 in the rear. And that boost, what it does is being a little bit wider, it gives you room for these plus size tires. These are 27.5 by 2.6, which is actually sort of the smaller, more nimble plus size. It, it does go 2.8 or 3.0, which would give you maybe a little bit of noise, a little bit of extra drag, extra weight. So this is kind of a nimble. Correct. We were talking about trail versus maybe, you know, doing some yeah. all mountain or whatever. You could even, uh, this would be a decent cross country platform being able to lock out and adjust the suspension, air suspension. So we've got compression, climb trail, descend, compression up here, and then also uh, rebound, of course. So you can change the characteristics of this bike. You can really do so much with it. Uh, I was just impressed to see, coming back to the boost, it's kind of necessary with the bigger tires, but it also gives you a sturdier bracing angle. And because of that, they have fewer spokes. So these are lightweight, narrower 15 gauge spokes, 28 up front, 32 in the rear, versus like all of them having 36. And they're all stainless steel spokes too. Stainless steel. And Double walled rims. Check that out. Compatible. What, what do you have? Box. Um, in the rear, there's reinforcement eyelets as well. Correct. So that was that's a nice little upgrade. Yeah, and that's where all the all the power is, as you know, as an expert. You know, they want that people people get on these bikes and they like all of a sudden the thing I've noticed is servicing them is a guy gets on his bike and he just thinks it's just 250. It's a Honda, you know. Yeah. And they're just mashing these gears. So fortunately, Giant is working with you know to even increase this in the future, to make stronger cassettes, stronger hub bodies. We, yes. We've had those conversations yes. and more proprietary e-bike components to really make this bike robust and ultimate bulletproof machine. I'm so glad you mentioned some of that, like the shifting and the wear and tear. This is an 80 Newton meter peak torque motor, which is quite a bit. Right. Um, we talked about like that 380% output. The nominal watts on this is 250 and it peaks out around 500. Right. So this is, it's it's a solid machine. It's one that can be very efficient if you're in yes. a lower level assist, but it can also climb well. And I wanna point out the shifter mechanism up here, okay? This is also SRAM. See how it says EMTB? This is an E mountain bike specific shifter it only has one click in it, 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 it's not a multi-shifter correct so it doesn't load up like a traditional eagle mountain bike it's mm -hmm. proprietary design for the mountain bike that way we don't have those massive ramps of shifting that would inter interfere with the rear derailleur and getting it bounded up and shifting too much and blown yeah. up a chain and blown Messing up a cassette. Up your Correct, exactly. Exactly, it's right. So th those are the little things. It's kind of easy to miss. Right. You see a mountain bike, you're like, oh, it's an electric mountain bike. Yep. I mean, lightweight, efficient, attention to detail on all this stuff. And then the brakes are also really important. So these are the SRAM Code R. Four piston. Quad piston down here with 200 millimeter rotors front and rear. Yes, so you got plenty of stopping power. You'll notice on this bike, if it was a traditional mountain bike, non-e-bike, 
like. It would be spec with probably a 180 front or a 160 rear or possibly a 203 front and a 180 rear. Yeah. Now, with these bikes being heavier and being designed to be, you know, trail trail warriors, trail slayers, you've got the power to stop this bike when needed because it is 20 pounds heavier than a regular mountain bike. It is heavier. And one way you can make it a little bit lighter, I think we're, we're probably not running tubeless right now. And if we, if we were, you'd shave off another, maybe, yeah, maybe another pound, pound and a half. Something like that. So we, again, we weighed it, it was like 54.6 pounds. Not too bad. It's going to depend on the frame size and stuff. I love that they didn't forego uh, bottle cage bosses right here because that could be used for folding right. lock, accessory, or water. I mean, right. a lot of people in the early days, they didn't, the e bike didn't have space for that, especially full suspension because the battery was there. Correct. Uh, but you know, and you, people would say, "Well, you get a camel back," but that's still nice to have. And the recommended is a side pull cage. A side pull cage, yeah, because it, it is a little bit easier, tight which right we here. We sell a ton of those. So They're yeah, awesome. the bottle kind of comes out from the side. And something that I think is super crucial that all of the all the consumers out there and the people watching these videos understand is, you know, Giant works with Yamaha together. It's a partnership. Mm. This is a proprietary motor that no other company can buy. Hmm. It's a sync drive. That's why it is lighter. It's something that Giant's engineered. So if you wanna make an e-bike or buy an e-bike motor, you cannot buy this motor. This motor is only through Giant. It's a sync drive motor and it's got special benefits and special things that other motors don't have because Giant's developed them in conjunction with Yamaha. So it's a great partnership. And specifically, you know, a Yamaha does great stuff anyway, but we were talking about that higher percentage of output. So 320, 360% percent, uh, output. I'm coming over to this side just to show you guys what it looks like. So it says Sync Drive Pro. It's a little plastic badge here powered by Yamaha. We've got a nice plastic um, guard around it. And I think this is a good weight savings option. You can see how it's kind of um, corrugated and that's going to give you a little bit more impact protection without having an aluminum alloy plate and we've got a little bit of corrugation right here under the battery as well you know paint matched a lot of really nice stuff here fox only does sticker paint matching but that does look pretty nice 36 millimeter stanchions up here you know that, that's kind of the the beefier design but again lightweight air and uh, aluminum alloy stanchions nice big wide rims and this is the charging point uh, for the battery which you know, what works okay. I've seen a lot of charging ports in this area. One thing you wanna be careful of is if these crank arms pass by, just cause it could unplug it or potentially bend that or something. It does have a nice cover and I like that there's a leash on it. So that cover isn't gonna get dropped or set down. I've seen some magnetic covers in the bat in the past. Like, you know, you take it off and then lose it. And then that's kind of a bummer and it can get dust and stuff in there. So just wanted to give you another view. Um, and it does look like what are these? There's the quad piston design, front and rear. Is that what we got? Yeah, one right here and one right here. So two on this side, two on that side. Super powerful brakes. World Cup downhill trail inspired brake system. Absolutely. We've got a dropper seat post. So 30.9 millimeter seat post diameter. And then I think it's 120 millimeters of travel. 150. I, I think we measured this one. It's probably different based it on is. different frame sizes. Medium is 125, large is 150. You're correct. Excellent. Thank you. Thank and you. And actually in their women's version, which is good to know, like an extra small frame, it has a 75 millimeter dropper. The handlebar length, is that another thing that gets kind of adjusted on these? So this bike Semi here, I want to say it's a 780. I could be it wrong. It is, yeah, you're right. It is a 780. Um, I think the bike above this, the SX Pro, that one has the 800 because it is a true enduro trail bike. Yeah. But yeah, this is, a, and this is also 35 oversized. So mm -hmm. this front end is super stiff. Oh, I was wondering about that. So uh, yeah, I see these like 31.8, but this is 35, 35 so it's mil. even thicker to yes. give you yep. extra control because it is a wider bar. We were talking about that, like the trade-off between thinner walls, but sort of a, a larger diameter, and it's all a, it's a weight thing. Correct, weight and stiffness and, and strength, you know? Mm -hmm. One of the other things that Giant's done this year on this bike over last year before it was called the Full E, yeah. was they really engineered this bike to be like the exact trance that you would buy as a mountain bike. So this is kind of like a trance. Yeah. And you notice here, they've got a lot much squattier head tube. Yeah. I would say this is a probably at about four and a half, five inches on a medium. Yeah. Or last year on the other bike, it was a lot higher. So they want you to really ride this bike as a full trail mountain bike rider. Hmm. Like this is designed for the guy that wants to go ride mountain bikes you know it's not a city bike it's not a sidewalk bike there's no kickstand no sir you nailed it <laughs> you're very observant too thanks but that's you know that's the design and thought process behind this bike with giants engineering department was 
mountain bike for the mountain bike enthusiast. Okay, well other things here, just to be complete, we have some locking grips to get the kind of a grid giant pattern, looks nice. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at the, the tires and we have the Maxxis Minion DHF up front, again, 27.5 by 2.6, 20 to 40 PSI, XO protection, puncture protection, tubeless ready. Now, if we go to the rear, check it out, Maxxis, and this is the Recon. So they actually have a different tread pattern. This one's helping you get grip for climbing and pedaling, whereas this one's gonna help you steer a little bit more right. effectively. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and that, that tire there, so if you know, it's a heavier bike with a heavier front end than a mountain bike. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of grip. As you know, mentioned, it's got the big knobby, so when it's in the dirt and the dirt's loose, you've got lots of traction. Yeah, Isn't yeah. That awesome. I love that. And then, yeah. you know, this is a pretty aggressive, kind of a narrow saddle for pedaling fast. You're not going to chafe and stuff. And it's it's actually not as hard as I as some of them. It felt pretty comfortable. Surprisingly, giant saddles are, are amazingly comfortable. Yeah. And when customers come in and look at bikes like this, I always tell them, no need to trade your saddle. Try it and come back. Yeah. I get one out of 10, one out of 12. Get some padded shorts. Come on. Yeah, That's you. what we're talking about. Shammy. <laughs> so I'll down here, 170 millimeter crank arms. Uh, these are hollow and it's, this has like a ISIS splined interface. So, you know, as you would expect with a nicer bike, it's not square tapered. Then we've actually got this, I guess a chain guide, kind of a plastic MRP. MRP. Yeah. yeah. Very, very nice. It's going to keep really that from cool dropping. Out, and it's a little detail. Giant puts all their torque specs on all of their hardware. Oh yeah. Is that cool? It is. And even up here, look, yes. Max Newton meter, we were noticing six newton meters on the clamp and that's probably coming back to the, the you know this is a fancier handlebar we Correct. don't want people over like crushing it Correct. Um, but that's and that's a question you know as a as service we get a lot of people call it what's the tech sport tech and all this stuff giant gives that information to the consumer which is awesome they do a great job yes they do so one of the other aspects of an electric bike is charging we talked about how you can remove the battery which is recommended if you're maybe putting this on a bike rack or or whatever and they, they say if you're not riding it for a while you, you know you do want to charge the battery regularly Correct. you don't want it to get down to zero if you can avoid that for sure. I've actually heard between 20 and 80%, it kind of keeps the battery happy. And that's true. And also when you recharge this battery, if the battery goes all the way down to like the lowest level, the charging system, I think it works like the first 70% of recharge is gonna be the fastest. Yes. And then it slows it down. So it balances it. And it's also a single cell supported battery and a fireproof. Oh, tell me about this. Fireproof. So what I was told, and I, you know, I don't know exactly because I'm not the full engineer, but the battery works in a way like Christmas tree lights. Yeah. So if a cell goes out in the battery, the battery's still solid, like a Christmas tree light. When you lose that one light, the whole thing shuts off. This battery continues to operate if it should lose a cell. We can discuss the warranty and the longevity in that as well. So the other aspect of the battery that's important to, to, just to keep an eye on is extreme heat and extreme cold. Because over time, that the heat can kind of degrade the cells a little bit and, and reduce the number of full charge cycles you'll get. Extreme cold isn't quite as hard on those cells, but it's going to limit your range. Like it's like having a cold phone, the battery doesn't last as long. So keep an eye on that. I like that it's removable and the charger is actually, it's really fast. This is a six amp charger. I am, I'm never seeing these. I mean, most of the time I'm seeing like two amp chargers, sometimes three amp, four amp. But look at it, it's pretty big. This is a, it's kind of a behemoth. We weighed it before and it was like 3.1 pounds. And I guess that's what you need to, to put out higher amps like that. They also have a dongle. So see the circle, that's what you have to plug in when it's mounted to the bike, on that little, on the left side by the crank arm. If you take the battery off, you have to have a dongle to plug in. It's a different design, which it looks like there's really good contact points here and stuff that's probably really reliable. I wish you didn't have to have a dongle because it's like one more thing. You don't want to lose this. So I would almost take a zip tie or something and zip tie it to the cord. And I also probably wouldn't be bringing this charger along with me if I was on a ride. And you might say, well, Court, there's nowhere to charge on a mountain anyway. And I'm like, okay, I get that, you know, but just, it's just worth calling out. Those are the trades. It's fast, but it's heavy. It's a little bit bigger. And coming back to the frame here, you know, just the quality stuff, the nicer battery, the nice motor, great components. You've got an excellent warranty here. This is two year comprehensive with lifetime on the frame. And what you, we were talking about Giant as a company and, and so, just the components and stuff. So basically, you know, if you look at this bike court, everything almost on it's a Giant proprietary product. Giant seat, Giant driver seat post, Giant bar, Giant stem, Giant frame. Yeah. You know, Giant wheels, they roll all of their own wheels. So they're, they're, oh, really? they're a massive manufacturing facility. Yeah. So the nice thing is it's a, it's a comprehensive package. It all goes together. It all flows. Giant's in control. And dealer supported. So, you know. Manufactured. Yes, dealer supported and manufacturer thing. supported. Being able to go in and test ride this, 
even have a frame size choice, but then try it and make sure it's right. Get right. it set up for you. Get it sagged right, and everything is is really nice. So this is really cool, and you know we're we're kind of halfway through 2019. Uh, what what's coming up in the future? Because I was really impressed with these steps. Can you talk about that at all? Well, let me let me tell you. I know you get the you're, inside you're, scoop. You're an e-bike goober. You get it. You love <laughs> yeah, it. And yeah. I get excited when I see new stuff. So lo and behold, you know, Giant and all the bike companies are starting to launch 2020 stuff. Giant has more new e-bikes coming. Mm -hmm. This bike will remain primarily the same. There has been a new motor and some updates made to the motor. Much higher cadence, revolution allowed. Oh, oh, while we're on that subject, yes. this supports up to 120 RPM, which for me, that's kind of the, that's the top and, until Mike was like, it gets even higher next year. It's crazy. 120 is pretty good already for, when you're dumping those gears, like you're, go, you're descending and you're coming to a climb and you're like, downshift, downshift, prepare to climb. There were, some of the older motors, even Yamaha motors, didn't support, they went to 100. So right. 120 is not bad. Yeah. Well, it's gonna ramp up even more because nice. that's what the consumer wanted. Yeah. The second thing that everybody's excited about is it's 18% quieter. Huh. Now, I didn't even know that until I was on the trail and I was riding a 2020 e-bike yeah. and I was chasing my sales rep, Mark Helms, who works for Giant, county executive, and he was on this bike. Hmm. I could hear his motor, but I couldn't hear mine. Interesting. And he was ahead of me. It's awesome. Huh. On top of that, they've done a few little quirks where this gets incorporated in the frame oh, now. I'm so glad you said that. And we should really call out, that's that's sensing your rear wheel speed, see that magnet? But that can get bumped. Like I've seen it kind of get out yes, of place. Correct. So now it's, is it in the disc brake rotor? So yeah, so they've got, there's gonna be some changes. Uh, this does get incorporated in there. That's a nice thing. The other thing that you talked about is this whole charging port mm -hmm. gets even better. Okay. If you're looking at the new other giant mountain bike that's gonna come out, um, it does have the 250 watt battery uh, compatibility, so we can add an additional battery for the guy that wants oh, to go that. Oh, yeah, there's a way to Enduro expand ride. your capacity. Correct, yeah. so that'll be available next year. Cool. The amp, or the app, excuse me, the app is available on this bike, which we played with. Yeah. We saw how easy that worked. That's right, we haven't even talked about it, so I... <laughs> you're going crazy, The bro. other things I that's mean, going on. You can do a giant, you're all excited, you forget <laughs> everything. <laughs> this motor, it's pretty cool motor controller. It's measuring a rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque, and it feels very natural. And I actually think that's already one of the more quiet, efficient motors. But the display panel here, it's its all incorporated, kind of a rubberized button pad. Some of the other giant bikes have like an LCD or, you know, bigger displays, but you can still use your phone with this. So I think it was the E-Ride or something like that. Yeah, Giant's got the app. I mean, we've looked at it. We were looking at it. What it offers here, Tyson, you and I were looking at this thing. Yeah. Um, can you tell me some of the, the readouts and things that you saw? Yeah, so um, it's the Ride Control app, uh, which fairly new, but it syncs with the bike through Bluetooth. And we tried it out. It's super easy to connect and then it'll ask you to register right away. Um, you can let's see your battery percentage. You can program the bikes. So you can program the yeah, motor. Yeah, tuning, the motor levels. tuning, yeah, right? Motor tuning. Uh, you can also do like uh, trip planning and that kind of stuff. So you can set your goals if you want to do like distance or you're going for a certain cadence or maybe elevation. Yeah. And then it'll help you plan your trip as well as kind of manage your power for that as well to make sure you'll be able to make it back home safe. That's very cool. That's It's neat to see that. And on this bike, compared to some of the other giant bikes with different displays, you know, they had different levels of eco and it actually said that. This one, it's it's more of an LED thing. So I'm gonna turn it on right now, I press that, and you can see that there's little white LED dots. So five of them over here on the right, that is communicating your charge level. So each dot represents 20% increment. And then the up button, there it is, It you've got five levels of assist. And it looks like it starts in level one. So you just have a little bit of help that sort of takes the edge off a heavier bike. I think this is really intuitive, very easy to reach, and it's stealthy. So coming back, I mean, when we look at it, even the motor, but the battery definitely, it's its really well integrated. This sort of blends in. It doesn't scream like, I'm an electric bike, uh, which is kind of nice. And back to the it quiet, is. <laughs> it, it is an electric bike, but Correct. you know, I think this is cool. One other button we noticed is walk mode. Can you help me get this out here, Mike? Thank you. Um, the walk mode on this bike works very quickly. So it's like almost as soon as you press it, the bike just starts moving like that, which can be very handy if you did get a flat or if you were climbing up like a, a steep section where you just didn't feel comfortable well, riding. The story was when I first heard about the walk button, I'm like, this is ridiculous. A couple <laughs> weeks ago, I was on a ride and I was climbing a steep hill and I came up along a rider and he bobbled and I stopped. I'm like, oh, I gotta go up. Yeah. This thing's heavy. And I had my cycling shoes on, it was slippery. Dude, the walk button. It work? It makes sense. I get it. Like, Good. That was a great invention. Thank you, Giant. That's Thank you, whoever created it. That's off. And it's really well implemented for me. So it's clean. This, this swivels a little bit. The white lights are actually pretty easy to see even in broad daylight. 
at night, I've, the, part of me feels like that could be a little bit annoying. You know, I, I don't think there's a way to turn off the brightness. You could put a little tape over it or something like that, or you can adjust that angle. So we were talking about a bright day, and you were like, I aimed it right at my face so I could see it. Correct. And then and you could just kind of aim it away if you... Yeah, during the day riding the trails, I had no problem seeing my power where I was at. It was awesome. That's great. That's great. And, and again, there's no beeps. But there is a bell. Yes, thank you. We're being very, very <laughs> complete here. But I like that this doesn't beep, that it's not it's not too overwhelming. We, of course, we do not have to leave the key in while riding. Can I hand that to you? Absolutely. And, uh, I think I think that's about it. Pretty short stem. We do have some spacers and stuff. So there's adjustability here in terms of the geometry, but it's a pretty, yeah, I would call this a pretty aggressive and well-balanced bike. We weighed it from like right there, right in the center of the frame and, and it balanced really well. Okay, guys, gonna take a little test ride on the trance. 10 to 50 tooth cassette back here, just super huge, 12 sprockets. And then 36 tooth chain ring up here. I always appreciate it when it's narrow wide and we've got that MRP guide, so you're not gonna be dropping the chain. It's not gonna bounce around a lot. And even if it does, got that nice big rubber slap guard. Look how close that, that crank arm is to the frame. This comes back to the sort of the smaller Q factor with the new Yamaha PWX motors, the lighter weight and everything. I'm gonna be riding around in the highest level of assist just to demonstrate about kind of the loudest operation that you might expect or encounter and just to showcase how how quickly it responds. So here's me pedaling gently, right? Not getting much at all. And then as I apply some pressure, it spins right up. So it's really dynamic. It's not like all or none kind of on or off feeling, which is exactly what you, you when you're on the trail, sometimes you want the high power to climb something, but you don't want to feel out of control on the tight sections or leading up to it where you're trying to balance. And of course it does balance really nicely with those you know, higher volume tires. feels great bike handles like a champ and there's a little bit of noise you hear the you can hear it but not that much when you're actually you know you're feeling the wind and you've got some trail noise under those tires this again this is the highest level of assist right here and I'm feeling good grab with that different tread pattern on the front tire we talked about the rear it has shallower and smaller nubs so it's more about spreading out that surface contact and versus like digging in and helping you corner hard. Oh, very nice. So we can cross over, shift down a little bit. And this one with the 12 speed, we do have the single click. There we go, almost made it there. Perfect. Beautiful day. Nice little section back here. Definitely hear some clunking because there is a lot of power going through this drive system. And that's a single click. So you can still let off a little bit like I am right now and I'm, I'm really reducing that like bang, just like a traditional bicycle. You're not, you don't really wanna shift a bunch of gears while you're climbing a hill. You wanna shift on your way to the hill or get a little bit of momentum and then shift while you're coasting for a second and just cycle those pedals versus really pushing down. Very nice, much smoother. Still a little bit allowed on that, that last one, but not too bad. Fullerton loop here. Hey, buddy. Okay, Mike, you're gonna hit this little trail over here through the woods and show us what this thing can do, right? This thing's amazing. Okay. He's on. What's what size is that? That's the medium, right? It's the medium size frame. Yes. Okay. Is that a good fit for you? Can you give us your your yeah, height? I'm five foot seven. So um, a medium is actually a perfect fit for me. I think Giant says on their website, small is like a five foot two. Five foot seven, five foot eight crossover. Medium is a five foot seven to a five foot eleven, depending. So I'm kind of full right in the middle, but I have long legs, plenty yeah. of rider cockpit area, which is nice. Yeah. Even with the short stem, um, the trance is a great fit. Okay, great, man. We'll go for it. Let's do it. I 
think he's just gonna drop through. Oh boy. <laughs> he's booking it. This guy is serious, he's flying through there. I'm switching some gears, trying to keep up. Oh, there's some quail. Nice, showing that suspension off. Good job, buddy. I, at first, I like fell right behind when you were taking off through that that first little section. Yeah, you caught some that. air. Want to try it again? No, that's okay. That's okay. Sure. Let's get back there, though. I would love to see that up close. Maybe I'll just park and you can fly okay. through. Sure. I'm downshifting as fast as I can so I can maybe follow him. Nice, catching a little bit of air. That's fun. I mean, you know, these do weigh a little bit more. You know, you've got the weight of the battery and the motor, and so maybe it's like 20 pounds or something like that. And that's, you know, you think about gaining 20 pounds. This way it's all low on the frame. Nice. Just, this guy has a blast. That's awesome. Hey guys, we're out on the trail, foot and loop, and we run into Scott over here, and I noticed you got a giant bike and some awesome gear, maybe some glasses that match, and Scott's turns out- Scott's got style, it's my boy. You're there a customer, you yeah? Yeah, a long time customer of uh, Ford and Bikes. Mike Franzi, one of my close personal friends. Sweet, man, when did you get your bike, and how's it working uh, for you? I got it about, what, nine months ago, Mike? About a year, year and a half ago. About a year ago, yeah, just uh, let life catch up with me and got a few pounds on me, so I took the e-bike route. Yeah. Definitely working. Good. So you're getting kind of some cardio, but also something fun that you look forward to? Go the miles I used to when, uh, back when I was a little thinner. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel you, man. Sometimes with the, I don't know what your job is, but it's nice to have a moment to get outside and get Absolutely. the cardio up. Absolutely, yeah. Good for sure. you. Is this thing, have you really pushed it and climbed some steep hills or oh, done yeah. some jumps? What do you think? Yeah, it'll do it, man. That's actually a very impressive bike. It's probably one of the best ones I've ever owned. I, I, is this a full? Yeah, man. You really, you went for the, fully. this is a full E. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, you know, I didn't want to cut any corners on it, but yeah. Definitely very pleased with it, very well designed. Hey, we just got done riding the Fullerton Loop. One minor gripe that I have is, you see how this sort of bulges outwards where the the key is, where you insert the key and unlock the, the battery, the locking core? I was standing up at one point pedaling and my knee actually struck that and it just hurt a lot. <laughs> Might be because this seat isn't quite high enough for me and stuff and it's, it's you know, there's there's always things to consider, like with plus size tires, this is a little bit wider back here, and you can, you know, you interact with the frame slightly differently. Uh, but I, f I feel like it would be nice if Giant didn't have a bulge right there. Like if it was just smooth, like the rest of the the down tube, it would it would just on this side it doesn't protrude, right? So yeah, I actually I bumped my knee, and uh, just a minor thing, but I want to be as thorough as possible so these can continue to improve. Uh, the suspension felt really great. The bike really grabs with those tires and the ride was nice. So anyway, this was great. I wanna thank Tyson for all of his great work doing some reviews on these bikes. I'm really excited for what we're gonna encounter in the future. The full written review, we'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there, ride safe. Got all the specs, you can compare these back to back and especially with the women's frame. Mike was riding that, he said he did notice the reach was shorter. He was like, that's noticeable. And it's just nice to get some feedback and um, you know, some real life perspective from people who ride a lot who, who can tell and, and sense those little minor variations between the frames. See you next time, guys.